All right, so I'm here with my buddy Randall. We are at KCDC 2019. All right. And I am here with Hunter from Veteran Home Loans. I'm here with my buddy Brian. <laughs> I'm here with Corey from Twilio. Happy to be here. We're here at KCDC, and we are going to play a little game okay. of creating the perfect programming language. All right. And we're going to play a little game of creating the perfect programming language. What programming language do you normally use? C-sharp. Typically Java. C-sharp. C-sharp? Yes. Why? God, I didn't even think about it. I, maybe I should have thought about it. Python is my preferred language with probably Golang and then JavaScript being a close second. Okay, why do I love C-sharp? <laughs> because it's so versatile. So the way this game works is I've got 12 cards here with features of programming languages. And you get to pick six. You are going to have to pick out of these 12 All right. which features you want your perfect programming language to have. You pick one, and then I get to pick one. And if I pick one, it means that you can't have that feature. But every time you pick a feature, I take one away. Oh, man. And if I take one away, it means your language has to have the opposite of that. Oh, OK. So choose carefully. OK. All right, so here we go. You take the first pick. So what is your most important feature for this imaginary programming language? Most important feature is this one. Strong and friendly community. That is that is a good choice. Yes. I'm going to say cross platform. I'm going to do this because Vibrant Library Ecosystem, Python definitely has this and it's amazing, so I'm taking that. My first, first is going to be helpful error messages. It's definitely something that you run into problems a lot, a lot of languages. If you're going to take helpful error messages, then I'm going to steal away from you real-time debugging. No. Okay. Yeah. That was my next choice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I am going to take static typing and now you oh, can't have oh, it. Oh, that's, that's hard. So I'm going to pull package management. Oh, man. So built-in package management is no longer a feature of this language, Damn. which means you're going to have to have third-party package management. Hey, that's why we have a strong and friendly community. I'm going to steal the interactive interpreter. Now okay. your language does not get. That's all right. I rarely use the REPL anyways, whatever. All right, let's see. What is your next most important My next, feature? See, this is tough. There's a lot of things I'm pretty nerdy about. The next most important thing. Ooh, you know what we need? Real-time debugging. I'm gonna grab that. Yeah, I'm gonna say debug. Real-time debugging, yeah. all right. Built-in package management, though, this is actually great, so I'm gonna take this. Functional syntax. Functional syntax. Next. Okay. Um, I think lends to readability and things like that. Uh, if you're gonna take functional syntax, then that means you're gonna have to have a dynamic typing language, then. Cool, super cool. <laughs> I feel really good about that. <laughs> So I'm going to take job availability. Now you don't get to get hired anymore for this perfect programming language. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Yeah. I didn't, I, my eyes literally glossed over that somehow. OK. I'm going to take away the interactive interpreter. I'm going to take away your interactive interpreter. Oh, man. So you get real-time debugging, but you have but to. But you, you have no REPL. You have no REPL. Damn. Next most important feature, concurrency. Cross-platform. Built-in package management. Built-in concurrency. I'm taking away your static type. Oh, damn it. Debugging. Concurrency support. I'm going to take away package management. Oh. I'm going to take concurrency because, hey, that's pretty cool. Hey, you know what? I, this is getting fun. Functional syntax. Um, vibrant library ecosystem. That is a good choice. Cross platform. If you take the library ecosystem, I'm going to take away your community. This is no longer a cross platform language. <laughs> 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 and I will also take static typing. I know you have a functional language, but you're gonna have to get away without using closure now. That's gonna be Which is really gonna be hard. a <laughs> challenge, I think. So I feel like JavaScript people watching this video are gonna get angry if I don't pick closures or functional syntax, but <laughs> there's a lot of JavaScript people who hate me already, so functional is pretty much the range right now, but I'm gonna say error messages are more important. I will take closures. Alright, JavaScript fans rejoice. Closures. Well then let's get a vibrant ecosystem going. I'm going to pick strong and friendly community. I, I took real-time debugging, and I'm also taking away your interactive interpreter. So you're, now you're going to have a real hard have, time running these programs. But it's good because my error messages are super clear. So At least you've got helpful error that's messages. That's right. Yep. You know what? I'll take the helpful error messages. Employable or functional syntax, uh, at the end of the day, I want to be paid. So I'm going to pick employable. I'm going to take helpful error messages. OK, so next I'm going to go with Vibrant library ecosystem. That means no job. No jobs. <laughs> there you go. All right. So what do you end up with? We got a language that is got a strong and friendly community, which is great. 
in a vibrant library ecosystem, which is phenomenal, right? Because the community is engaging and helpful in all the things. We use a functional syntax that has built-in concurrency support. That's amazing. We get real-time debugging and super helpful error messages. This actually does make me feel like this could be a strong, a a strong language. language. I mean, you it's, may not be able to get a job, but... You may have to use third-party package managers, but overall, it's a pretty good language. Uh, this feels like a good language. Yeah. What did you end up with? What does your perfect programming language have? All right. So it's, it's employable. Great error messages. Vibrant library ecosystem. I think that's that's critical. Cross platform. That was my number one. Yep. Real time debugging. Yep. And then concurrency support. Would you say that Java has all or most of these features right now? I would say that. Yeah, I would. I don't think I missed anything. I think the error messages. I think any error messages could use help. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this language, according to this uh, terrible trade off exercise, you jerk, has a <laughs> vibrant library ecosystem. That's pretty cool. Built in package management. That's also pretty great, right? It's cross-platform, so it won't just run on like Solaris 3.2 or something. Built-in concurrency support, so we can, you know, go web scale with this thing. Closures, so that's fantastic. And then finally, helpful error messages. So in the event we do somehow write a bug, we can recover on our own without the help of a strong and friendly community. So how close does this end up to being C Sharp then? Um, well... Not quite what you're used to. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, okay. It's fun. It's good to learn new languages. That's very true. Expand your horizons. Yep. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for playing. Of course. Thank you so much. Dude, that was fun. Thanks for playing the programming language game. I hope Ooh. you're happy with your perfect programming language. Yeah. Bye, everyone. <laughs>